Not all that long ago, the prevailing idea when it came to leadership in the church is that it fell squarely into two distinct arenas. On the one hand, you had your clergy, and the clergy's sole responsibility was for the spiritual well-being of their congregation. And on the other hand, you had your vestry, and the vestry's sole responsibilities were for the legal and fiduciary affairs of the parish. Sounds great, right? But we all know the dividing line between those two arenas is not nearly that distinct. Clergy should always know what's going on financially and legally in their congregations, and in fact, they bear great responsibilities in that regard. But just as importantly, members of a healthy vestry, they understand that they too are spiritual leaders in their congregations. Now, don't let that scare you. That does not mean that vestry members are supposed to be particularly perfect or holy or have it all figured out. No, it simply means that when they walk into the room together, they understand that they are more than just the board of governors. They understand that they are what Canon Neil Michel in his book, How to Hit the Ground Running, likes to call a community of learning disciples. They are motivated not just by spreadsheets and finance accounts and the decisions on the agenda. They're motivated by listening to the Holy Spirit, by loving one another, by following Jesus. And it all starts with creating a culture of discernment. Uh, I'm 35 years old and discernment was not part of my vocabulary until I joined the Episcopal Church. Uh, I'm a snap judge kind of person. I take a, a little bit of time to think about it, but once I've decided, I have decided. And I have learned that the process of discernment, of slowing that down, of really ruminating on something and, and thinking and, and listening and looking for what God's telling me in that process is crucial. We are a body of Christian believers trying to lead a parish of Christian believers, then we need to make sure that we are seeking God's guidance in our decision making. Just walking in and treating it like a business meeting isn't going to allow us to do that. So it's very important that we spend time in prayer together to look at um, scripture and Christian tradition and find ways to allow those things to shape us as a vestry to lead us to the decision that God would want us to make for his church. So how do you create that culture of discernment? How do you take a vestry from business as usual to a community of learning disciples? Well, it's all about how you choose to spend your time. What if a vestry meeting did not start with last month's minutes or this month's financials? What if it didn't start with old business or even new? What if instead, we spent the most valuable time at our vestry meetings, the beginning, when everyone's still fresh and alert and ready to go, what if that time were given over to helping one another grow deeper in our knowledge of God and in our love and trust for one another? We call this formation. And to be clear, it's not about superficial devotions or perfunctory prayers. We are talking taking time and going deep. Say your vestry is facing a really hard decision for the parish at this meeting. Well, why not start the meeting with a real true Bible study, doing a deep dive on one of those great stories where Moses or Paul had to lead their people through a tough choice. Or say your vestry is needing to plan for the future, but nobody knows where to start. What if you teach one of our handy congregational development models and use it as a way to discuss and discern what God is leading y'all to next? Or what if you walked into the room at the beginning of a vestry meeting and made a list of all your core volunteers, divvied it up, and spent 30 minutes writing thank you notes to all those wonderful people? On paper, formation time in a vestry meeting looks like a total waste of time. But if you do it right, it transforms the whole rest of the meeting when you finally do get to the discussions, the decisions, the minutes, and the finances. It doesn't just transform the meeting. Over time, you do it over and over, 
starts to transform the vestry, starts to transform you, it starts to transform the whole parish. Besides, if your vestry isn't actively growing in God, how do you ever expect anything different for the rest of the parish? To a new vestry member that is unsure of why we're spending 30, 45 minutes or an hour in formation before we get to the business of running the church, I will tell them that this is not a traditional board. You are not just looking at power bills and salaries and, and making sure that the dollars and cents add up. This is about the formation of our church family. This is not just a building that we're running. We're building a community of folks and trying to lead them closer to God through the ministries and, and through the efforts that we're doing. And so it's more important than just checking off a fiscal statement or looking at policies and rules. We do a lot of different kinds of formation. Oftentimes it's Bible study and we'll do various forms of that. One thing that I've always really enjoyed though is when we'll bring in um, various aspects of Christian tradition that I have, am not as familiar with, um, such as the Benedictine rule or some of these ancient or, or time-tested patterns of Christian living and Christian formation or decision-making. And then we'll structure our conversation, applying that structure and that, that way of being Christians to our time together. And I always find that very valuable. I have been able many times to utilize that in my own personal prayer life or devotion life and um, my, my personal efforts to live as a Christian in the world. So now you've done good formation. You've had good, hard discussions on whatever's going on in the life of the parish this month. Now it's time to make some decisions. In some vestries, decisions can be highly contentious, filled with winners and losers, passing or failing by the slimmest of margins. But what does a discerning vestry do with decisions? What does a community of learning disciples do when it comes time to decide? Well, it may sound crazy, but what we've discovered is almost no decision ever has to be made at the same meeting at which it's discussed. Instead, we discuss at one meeting, and we don't decide until the next meeting. That is especially true if it's a major decision. What that does is it gives time. It gives time for tempers to cool. It gives time for prayers to be said. It gives time for consensus to build. It gives time for God to add more clarity to our hearts and minds. Even our decisions are all about discernment. So I think it's important when we have a major decision that will cause ripple effects through our congregation or will have long lasting effects, a lot of times our vestry will delay those major decisions for a month. We'll have discussions, we'll invite everyone to come back the following month with their observations, and then when you come back in the following month, and you're loaded for bear and you have your opinions and you're just waiting to dump them out on the table, when you go through that formation process, it again grounds you in what God is wanting to happen in this parish life. And so it refocuses all of that data that you've gathered through the lens of God's prism like we talked about and allows you to really make a sound decision based on your observation. Our church has been here for many years, a century or more. And we plan for it to be here for many years to come. Rarely is there a decision that is that urgent, that has to be made in that moment. The old saying of, let me sleep on it, is it true? Like, they become the old sayings because there's truth to them. So taking us as a group and letting us all sleep on it for a month even is important. It allows that time for the Holy Spirit to work on each of us, to make sure that we're not making rash decisions out of this um, false sense of urgency. Things can be important, but not necessarily urgent. And we want to make sure that we are taking the time to listen to what God might be saying to us and to make sure that we are making the decision that's gonna be best for our church, for our parish, so that we can make sure that we have many more years to come in the life of our community of believers.
Any vestry can become a community of learning disciples, but it does help if you've spent some extra time together, learning one another's stories, building trust, laughing, crying, praying together. That's where the value of a vestry retreat comes in. Even Jesus took his disciples away from time to time to give them a little rest and respite and to teach them a little something before he then sent them out to do the work he had given them to do. I think our vestry retreat each year is the most important thing we do as a vestry. We are not the leadership board of the Civitan Club or a country club. We're not an executive board of a business. We're not even the executive board of a church. We are the servant leaders of our parish. And if we are going to model our lives that way, we need to be formed as a community um, of disciples. And one of the ways you do that is you've got to get out of your comfort zone. Something happens when we go away together that the Holy Spirit works and brings us together in a way that doesn't happen here in our normal meetings. My very first vestry retreat, I was brand new. I didn't understand the processes. I didn't know my fellow vestry members as well. So that interaction with them, the ability to turn off the outside world and to just be present with each other is not only forming of bonds, but it's also a good time to do some strategic planning if necessary and kind of set the path for the year coming up. It's a good time to address hard conversations that may need to be handled over the course of the next six to 12 months. My favorite part of the vestry retreat is the, the planning because a lot of times we don't do that. We are so reactionary, but it also gives us an opportunity to have some idea generation and for everyone to kind of talk with each other and say, oh, you're doing this? Well, I might want to do this. So being together in person uh, generates ideas. And I think that's probably the best part of a vestry retreat for me. My favorite part of vestry retreat is always Saturday night. We have a bonfire and we all hang out around the bonfire, talking, cutting up, sharing refreshments and drinks and, and just staying out there, just having a good time. We've, we've finished the work and the business. And now it's really about having fun together. And that's the part that I look forward to most. The thing that I've most loved about serving on Vestry is the chance to be formed deeper in my own faith and my own Christian leadership. And coming in, I didn't really know what I was getting into when I got elected to Vestry. Um, I didn't know about what, what did a meeting even look like? What did we actually do on Vestry? All I knew was that it was the leadership of the church, the lay leadership of the church. And this time where we have experienced Christian formation together, made tough decisions, um, gone away on retreats together, it's all shaped me and formed me, led me deeper into my faith. 